Hey guys, and welcome back to another review. Today we'll be checking out the Tone Hammer pedal by Aguilar. This is a preamp and DI combo pedal made specifically for bass. So let's have a look at some of its features. Right down here we have the engage switch. Uh, this will illuminate a blue light up top and we have beside it the AGS switch and that will illuminate an orange light in the middle. Now unfortunately the AGS doesn't work unless the pedal is engaged so they have to be used together. And now on the sides here we have the discrete gain knob and master knob. Now the cool thing about this is it lets you dial in the exact amount of additional gain structure that you'd like for the pedal uh, which is what the AGS stands for. And up here we have the treble which is a cutter boost of 18 dB at 4K, as well as the bass knob, which is a cutter boost at 40 Hertz. And the mid-range is actually sweepable with the contour from 180 to 1K. As for durability, this pedal is extremely heavy. It's 3.5 pounds, which is well over double uh, the standard pedal size, and it's actually quite a bit larger too. Down on the bottom here, we have a thumb screw, which houses the battery compartment. It takes two 9 volt batteries and they just kind of fit right in there. And as you can see here on the top side, we have some connections and some additional controls. And so from left to right here, we have the output, a ground lift, a DI out, a pre or post switch. Um, and this actually applies to the AGS as well as it does the EQ. And right next to that, we have the universal power supply. You can also use the batteries or phantom power. So you actually have all three options. And uh, this jack here is just a the standard universal one spot sort of power adapter. Um, and then we have the inputs and outputs. But yeah, it's just a really great pedal. Uh, it MSRPs for around 430 bucks, but you should be able to find it cheaper somewhere. And more importantly than how it looks and how much it costs, let's have a listen. All right guys, so I got Pro Tools open here and I'm gonna give you guys a little demonstration of how this pedal sounds. So for this demo, I'm gonna be using a Fender five string jazz bass. I have it set to the passive position so the EQ doesn't matter and I'm using uh, kind of right between the two pickups. So I'm gonna give you guys a taste of how this bass sounds just by itself. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and flick on the pedal. Now basically with this pedal, you wanna keep the master uh, right around the middle. That's sort of where you get a balance between not using it and using it. So if you're gonna be toggling in the middle of a song or a show, uh, this is how to get a consistent level. So as you can see, it's pretty close if I flick it on and off here. You can hear a little bit of a boost, but I think that's just because of the EQ, so. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and play a little sample for you, and I'm gonna toggle through some of the sounds. What I'm gonna do is do extreme, so show you the whole the whole span of each each knob and what it's capable of. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty easy to be subtle with this EQ, and it's one of the things that I love about it. It's a great solid EQ, but something really cool added on is this AGS feature. So as you can hear, it's adding a tiny bit of drive. So I'll go ahead and sweep between the gain uh, from zero to full, so you can hear how this thing sounds. Now you'll notice it gets a bit out of hand. I have to turn on the master a little, and this is just to compensate for the, the preamp volume. So I'll do a little riff with this on. You can hear how this thing sounds. But yeah, one thing I really love about this pedal is it's super easy to be subtle with it, and it's super easy to use the EQ. Um, you pretty much can't make it sound bad, and that's one really handy tool. Uh, makes it a really solid DI box. So my only one flaw that I will say about this pedal is that the whole pedal itself is encased in this 
this steel layer on the outside, which at first seems like a great idea. And on this side, it's it's great because it protects all your inputs and the, the buttons there from being pulled out or whatever. Now, the issue is if I take a standard 90 degree patch cable off my pedal board and try to plug it in here, it doesn't actually have the room to spin around freely. Now, this patch cable does, um, but if you use any of those slimmer, low profile patch cables that you'll have on a pedal board, they end up having to sit kind of sideways like this and they'll end up blocking the, the power adapter. Now, this is by no means a big issue, kind of a first world problem, but it's something to consider. Well, that's it for the review. I hope I've done this pedal some justice. It is seriously an awesome pedal and it'll always be part of my pedal board. Uh, but that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.